Hi guys, today we're going to look at how the cathode ray oscilloscope works. We're going to have a look at the internal workings, how the tube works, and then we're going to have a look at solving some problems using the information off the grid. So firstly, this is what the inside of a cathode ray oscilloscope would look like. Uh, that You've got a tube here, and inside the tube it's been evacuated, all the air has been taken out, because electrons are going to fire through here, and if there was air, as the electrons are moving, they would bump into the air, so all the air gets removed from the glass tube. Here, we've got a heating element. And the heating element, what can happen is, uh, there's actually about 6 volts across here, but there's quite a high current that goes through here. And the electrons, they'll start to heat up in this little piece of metal here. Then we've got an anode here, and the anode is positively charged, so Electrons that are uh, they're very easy to it's easy for them to come off here. They accelerate towards the anode that's positively charged, and there might be a few thousand volts potential between the cathode here and the anode. Now, as the electrons go through, so they get accelerated through here, they'll move in between the X plates and the Y plates. Now, the X plates. They can control where the beam goes in the, on the uh, X plane. The Y plates, well, they can control where the electrons go on the Y plane. So as the electrons pass through here, they go through a little hole in the anode. If this plate here was positive, the beam would be attracted towards this, this plate, moving the electrons over here. If the top plate here was positively charged, it moved the beams. So it moved the beam up here. So using combinations of the X and Y plates, you can move the beam anywhere here. So when the electrons hit, they hit a fluorescent screen. I think it's coated with phosphorus. So as soon as the electrons come, they, they hit the phosphorus and they make the phosphorus glow this kind of nice green color. Now when you first look at the front of an oscilloscope, they can look quite confusing. Lots of buttons and dials, but really, all you need to be aware of is two controls. They're the time per division and volts per division. So what do we mean by a division? Well, if you look at the grid on the front of the oscilloscope, you'll see you've got little squares here. Now this is one division here going across, and this would be one division going up like that. So the time per division, that controls how long does it take for the beam of electrons to sweep across one division. So if I set it to one second per division, it would take one second to go across like this. So each division as the beam is moving across like this, it would take just one second to go from one division to the next. Likewise, with a Y, the wave can be controlled, or the, the beam of electrons can be controlled going up and down. And here you can control, well, how many volts does it take to make the beam go up by one division. So if it was five volts per division, to make the beam go up by one division, it would take five volts. If I wanted to go two, it would take 10 volts. So you can control that there with the volts per division. And remember, time division is going across like that. Now here we've got a few examples of some problems, just looking at the time per division. So here in our first problem, uh, the time per division has been set to one second. So we've got our wave here. So we want to find out what's the time period, so the time taken for one wave and the frequency. Well, if we look here, there's the the amount of time it takes for one whole wave. And if we count the divisions, it's one, two, three, four divisions. So the time period is four times one second, which is four seconds. Now frequency, time period is equal to one over frequency, or frequency is equal to 1 over the time period. So 1 divided by 4 is a quarter, or 0 0.25. So our frequency is 0 0.25 hertz. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Now this time, the time per division has been set to 0 0.5 seconds. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 divisions for one wave. So 4 times 0 0.5 is equal to two seconds. So it takes two seconds for our wave to go across. So the frequency, again, is gonna equal one divided by the time period, which is gonna equal one over two, which is a half, 
which is 0 0.5 hertz. And then finally, this time the time per division has been set to milliseconds. So it took 1, 2, 3, 4 milliseconds. So 4 times by 1 millisecond is 4 milliseconds. And we need to convert this into seconds, so we need to divide by 1,000. So 4 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.004. And then finally, so, so that's our time, so 0 0.004 seconds. And then to find the frequency, well, we're going to do 1 divided by 0 0.004, which I think is 250, but let me just double check. So 1 divided by 0.004 is 250 hertz. And that's our frequency. For more videos, don't forget to subscribe. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. Bye!